Hey guys, so another easy dinner from Costco. The chicken mozzarella ravioli with some pecorino. And then I have the yellow tomatoes from the CSA with some romaine from the CSA. I drizzled it with some balsamic vinegar, some lemon oil, and topped it with pecorino. Look how pretty. Easy peasy dinner. So Michael is making another sandwich. It looks beautiful from that point of view. Yeah, look how golden. So there's one in the... That one's got provolone yeah. on it. Mine just has cheddar. So tell me what's in it. Um, it is roast beef, uh, uh, cheddar cheese, and Matthew's over there. It, it's got a provolone on some, um, what's it called, a, a potato bread? Yeah, potato bread. Yep, uh, it's, it's a rare, uh, it's a potato bread, god damn it. And, and, and we'll butter the, both sides, oil on the pan, that way it doesn't stick. Then he covers it to get the cheese all melty. Yep. Uh, they can't sell it like that? Wow. It's even better if I like, at that point of view. Wow. Roast beef. That one's roast beef and cheddar. Yes. And that one's roast beef, cheddar, and provolone. Grilled yes. cheese. The student has become the master. See, the thing with John's sandwiches, I think most of them are always Italian-based. Michael's venturing Again. out. Like this. And then. You need a better knife. Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> and that's lunch. Hey guys, wanted to show you this. So, one of my great friends here that I met, um, Went to works near Trader Joe's, and I told her about this soup. She got it for me last year. It was an autumn harvest soup. So I actually kept the jar, autumnal harvest soup. So good. She gave this to me last year, last fall, um, when she brought a whole bunch of food over for me for uh, one of my surgeries. So... Uh, Keep moving. Jeez, girl. Jeez. So um, I asked her, uh, I don't know how packed um, Trader Joe's gets now with uh, COVID and stuff like that, if it's hard to get in. But if she does go, could she get me maybe three or four bottles of these, jars of these, because it was so good. So look what she did. <laughs> she got me a case full. 10. So she got me all of these. Oh my God, it's so good. Let me tell you, I really enjoy the soup. But she also got me the pumpkin. Oh my God, I can't read it. The autumnal harvest creamy pasta sauce. I was like, okay, nice. And so one of those jars, the rest is the autumnal soup. But then she also got me, where is it, two jars of this one, the garden vegetable soup. So Trader Joe's comes up with some good things. The Their fall line is freaking fabulous. Um, so yes, I have seven jars of the autumnal harvest soup, one jar of the pasta sauce, which I'm very excited to try, and two jars of this vegetable garden soup so so excited friends are the best aren't they so that um i still want to go it's been a long time since i've gone i miss trader joe's um but fall is always the best time to go they have some really good stuff uh so yeah i'm excited to have the soup now i don't have to worry about this jar anymore but i'll store stuff in it you know me. So tonight we are trying the Costco chicken pot pie. Let me tell you, it looks good. Um, giving that a try. Uh, like I said, quick and easy. Throw it in the oven, 375. It does cook for about 90 minutes. Um, I had to put it at 405. Um, so it cooked in about an hour. Yeah. Um, 
which wasn't too bad. Um, so you can still do it. Uh, higher temperature. Uh, didn't burn it. And I did check the internal temperature and it says between 165 and 180. So it was definitely hot enough. Um, the outer rim is definitely hotter than the inner rim right now, but it is at 165 and then it was like 170, 175 here. Um, so, and it's, it's the rotisserie chicken, so it's not anything raw in there. Uh, so yeah, looks good. We're going to dig right in. So I made a salad with CSA lettuce and tomatoes with the lemon oil and the blueberry balsamic. And then look at that chicken pot pie, chunky chunks of rotisserie chicken, big carrots, peas, looks delish. So tonight's easy dinner was the Italian sausage ravioli from Trader Joe's. I tried one. Not, not a lot of sausage, gotta tell you, a little cheap on the sausage. Do some of my marinara sauce in there. Yep, skimping on the meat. There's cheese in it and broccoli with garlic powder and butter. But yeah, they're practically empty if you want to pretty much. Um, there was cheese, little pieces of sausages, but they actually were really good. So that's dinner tonight. Okay, I mean, to a music choice. What music choice? They love the cheese. Were you recording me putting on cheese? Yes, I was recording you putting on cheese. And I didn't get yeah, the yeah. cheese yet. Yeah, he'll keep going. That's, <laughs> that's the cheese lover over there. He loves it so much, right, he puts right. them on his pants for later. <laughs> <That was next. laughs> and that is dinner tonight. Cheese, he loves it. Hey guys, uh, dinner tonight is going to be leftovers. Um... I have that chicken pot pie in there with some pieces of grilled chicken. There's also some chicken thighs with sweet potatoes that we made that I didn't film, so I'm sorry about that. Um, but we needed something to go with the chicken. Uh, so I'm going to make some penne. And because this has been sitting around, and I think it's like half done, but it's been sitting there for a while. Um, I'm actually going to make um, a white queso cheese sauce. I'm going to loosen it to some milk, you said pour you it over the pasta. Pumpkin ravioli stuff. No, I didn't say pumpkin ravioli. Yes, you did. I said there's a pumpkin pasta sauce. That. But I'm not eating that, so uh. I figured this will go first with the boys. And that could be saved for another night. So are we having pumpkin sauce? No. No pumpkin sauce. Not mm. tonight. This is probably the best video you ever taped. <laughs> well, that has to go. That's why. What about wild. the pumpkin sauce? It's not even open, so that has a longer shelf life right now. Uh, Plus, it's you, new in the house. You said that before. No, so I didn't. you should make it. No, not tonight. Not tonight. Something else. <laughs> Pasta is done, and I poured in the white gesso. It was really good, but the boys don't snack a lot, and then they forget that that's in the refrigerator. So, like I said, it's been sitting there for a while, so it had to go. Um, but it is really tasty has that taco taste to it. I hope they like it on the pasta. There's always one that complains. So I'm gonna loosen it with some milk. Oh, and I have some good news. In two days, they're gonna come and fix my oven and my refrigerator, because the refrigerator, out of the blue, died. Died. Went in there to get some frozen bananas for my smoothie and they were mushy so not happy about it I'm still in the process of cleaning it out we put everything in the refrigerator in the garage so this is the stuff that if it gets tossed I don't really give a 
You know what I'm saying? So, it's cleaned out like it's a brand new fridge. So I put some milk just to loosen this because it's a pretty thick sauce, cheese sauce. Then I'm gonna add my pasta back in, which would probably thicken it even more. And if I need to loosen it with some milk, I'll do that. Pasta is done. And all the other food is heated up. Here's some of the pot pie, and I threw some of the grilled chicken in there. And then these were some chicken thighs with some sweet potatoes. So then I made some salad, some yellow peppers, and some tomatoes. And that's dinner tonight. So I forgot to film it when I plated it. I took the sweet potato and the chicken thighs, my salad with oil and vinegar. The boys ate. Nothing. There's evidence. She isn't feeding us! <laughs> they actually do like the pasta. Michael and Sean polished off the that chicken pot pie. the Mexican. Taste the Mexican. Ugh. It's good though, right? Yeah, it's good. See? You don't have Pop to just, better. you don't have to eat queso just for dip. Wait, what did you say? Mmm. That the was dinner. Better. Who was better? Pot pie. Oh, the pot pie? Oh, yeah. Uh, I just said Popeyes. Same. Yeah, I thought like, he right? said Popeye too. The, no. the, the pot pie was just a little on the salty side, say, but okay. it was still good. It I say good. one stupid thing, y'all think I'm stupid. Yeah. No. Yeah. <laughs> hey guys. So for tonight's dinner, I am going to make chicken meatballs with this Mighty Spark ground chicken Thai style um, seasoned with garlic, shallots, soy sauce, and ginger. Uh, I've had this before, very Asian inspired flavors, very tasty. Um, so I'm gonna make some chicken meatballs with that. Just kind of throw some clumps in my skillet. Got some white rice. Uh, I have veggie blend in the freezer, so I'm just gonna make a fried rice, Asian fried rice, to go with that. And that is dinner tonight. Bring up my skillet. Just gonna add some oil. Then I gotta cut these open. I got these from Publix. They were on sale, buy two, get one free. Um, they're about six, seven dollars each. So I got two and I got the third one free. Um, the other flavor that they have is bruschetta, which is really good. I think I've had that in a video somewhere. Um, but we're having the Thai today. Uh, so let that get heated, cut those open, and then throw some blobs in the skillet and just have them browned. So the ground chicken is very hard to um, form into actual meatballs unless you add the flour and the egg, which I don't want to. I don't want to add extra carbs. Um, so I just kind of take blobs of it and try to make meatballs out of it. Um, but I've had this before. The smell and the taste of it reminds me of Adele's, um, teriyaki pineapple chicken meatballs. So it is very, very, very good. So... I guess the, the boys would like the fried rice with it, the vegetable fried rice, as opposed to sweet potatoes, because that's what I have, and I love sweet potatoes. I would eat this with sweet potatoes, but they'll give me a hard time. So, it's been a while since we had the vegetable fried rice, so I'm making that tonight. Very simple. I'll link the video that I've made with it before. Uh, below and yeah, I'm actually pretty excited about this dish. Um, I'm gonna keep my eye on the sales for those because it is a really good, good product. I love it. So this meat must have some kind of like honey or sweetness to it because they darken really quickly. A lot of caramelization. So I had to put it on the lowest heat. Um, just so that they don't burn quickly and then be raw on the inside, but oops, my hands all wet. Oh, crap all over my hands. They're tasting. 
Meatballs are done. That is starting to burn. Got some onions here. I'll scrape that in there. Then I added the cooked white rice. Added the frozen veggie blend and the rice and the heat is just gonna thaw it out pretty quickly. Look at that! Wow, that's picture worthy. Um, so I have some soy sauce. Nope, that is sesame oil. Sorry. So I'm gonna drizzle some sesame oil. It goes a long way. And then I have the tamari which is a uh, non-soy um, soy sauce. No, actually, sorry, I think it is soy. It's non, it's non-wheat. It doesn't have wheat in it or gluten. And this is organic, so organic soy, which is important because soy is a huge GMO crop in the United States. Say no to GMO. There we go. Hear that sizzle. Mmm, vegetable fried rice. Now I know, you know, with fried rice, they usually make it in a wok at high heat. But I don't have that. So, using my skillet. Mmm, so that's pretty much done. I think I'm going to serve them separately. I'm not going to throw that in there. Um, but that's it. Dinner's ready. And there it is plated. Simple. Hmm. But delicious. Full of flavor. So I have all these radishes and beets from the CSA that I have not eaten yet. So I'm actually going to roast them. So I'm cutting up the fat ones. The little ones I might just throw in salad and keep them. Because um, they'll obviously burn fast. And I'm going to chop these down to more you know, comparable sizes. Saute with olive oil, salt, pepper, and lots of garlic, and then I'm roasting them. I'm doing it at 405, because my oven's been weird. Um, yeah, someone came to fix it, um, but it, it costs just as much as to get a new one, so we're just gonna get a new one. So I'm on the hunt for a new oven. But yes, I'm going to roast some radishes and beets so that I can either throw in salads or just pick at because I like picking at vegetables. Um, yeah, that's uh, going to be, I guess, snack. <laughs> Snacks. So I chopped up the beets and the radishes. Look how pretty. Um, I'm saving these bigger beets. Uh, I'm going to get some apples, and I love to make juice with beet, apple, Ginger, I need ginger. Uh, carrot, a uh, lemon, beet, apple, carrot, ginger, lemon. Yes, those five. So I love making juice with that. So I'm gonna save those. Those are the ends. So I'm gonna throw them in my vegetable garden for compost. And I just wanted to show you. So I have a fig tree outside and I had it for three, four years already. So last year was the first year I got figs and only three ripen. This year, I got a couple more ripe, and so far, there's a lot of figs on the tree, but so far, 10 had ripened. Um, they're so good, so um, these are the last four. <laughs> um, so I picked them yesterday. They are so delicious. I had some for breakfast. Oh, little fig top, throw that in the compost bin. Um, so yeah, I've been eating them. I love the figs. These are great on salad. And Giada De Laurentiis made a fig red wine sauce to go with pork loin. Mm. And then these are the last of my tomatoes. I picked them while they were green uh, when I cleaned up the garden beds and they're slowly ripening with a couple of chili peppers. So here's my very, very large garlic. I'm going to smash it, throw it in there with olive oil, salt and pepper, and then roast them. It's so large, I only need one. I'll save this one. Garlic's in there. Let's put some olive oil. Some salt, pink Himalayan sea salt. And I need to 
put some pepper. There. Toss. Oop. Hard to toss with one hand, you know what I'm saying? Ooh, smell that garlic. Throw it on my silicone baking sheet. Oh, I threw a kohlrabi in there too. Yeah. So I found out that my oven, even though it says 405, it actually is in the 500s. So things have been cooking a lot faster. And in the 300s, that's why it doesn't kick back on because it's actually registering in the 500s. So um, even though it's, if I wanted to get 350 or 375, it's actually in the 500s. So when it starts to cool down, it doesn't cool down long enough or far enough for it to kick back in when I try to do 300s. 400s it does. That's why my oven's been so wonky. So for about five, I gotta lower that rack. So for about five or $600, they could fix it or I could get a new oven. So we figured, you know what, John said, why don't you just get a new oven? He goes, oh, oh my, 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 sorry. He said, since I love to cook, there you go, since I love to cook and we love to eat, um, we had gotten that oven fixed before. We don't want to have to run the risk of spending five, six hundred dollars when for a few extra hundred you could get a new oven. We don't want to run the risk of us having to have it fixed again because this is the second time. So I'm putting that in there. Hopefully in about 15, 20 minutes, they'll be done. I don't know if you can hear that. They're singing. So they're done. Look at them. Oh, it sounds like they're chirping like birds. Over here somewhere. Can you hear it? Well, not with you talking. Jesus. Um, but yeah, see, nice and soft. Golden. Delicious. He's an ass. Ignore him. So that's roasted vegetables. Tonight I am making cottage pie. See, I got it right. Cottage pie. Got some ground beef cooking here. And then in my Instapot, I'm going to make some potatoes. So now these three are regular potatoes, but these are Alabama white sweet potatoes. The boys won't know. And then I have one very odd looking orange sweet potato. Looks like a booty. Um, so... Yes, it'll be mostly white. These actually are more starchier, so they're like um, kind of like a Japanese purple sweet potato where it's white on the inside, so it's more starchier, so more like a potato. And then I'm just going to add one of these to give it a nice orange color. That's dinner tonight. So when the beef was browned, I drained the fat. I added some beef bouillon, which I didn't have a lot of, so it's not very dark brown gravy. I added water, a little bit of salt, my frozen vegetables. So I'm just gonna let that simmer. I have some fresh garlic, sorry, fresh broccoli. Just thinking ahead, you know. Uh, fresh broccoli from the CSA that I chopped up. Beautiful, beautiful head of broccoli. And I still have extra that I'm going to bag up for another dinner. I'm going to just sprinkle that with some um, garlic powder. See, that's where I was thinking ahead. And I did drizzle it with some olive oil. 
and over here my potatoes are done so I got to open that and mash them and I decided to make a bread homemade bread giving it a try I'm actually trying a different flour if it doesn't come out it doesn't come out but that's just a recipe from the uh, manual that that came with so figured some bread and butter on the side might be nice potatoes are ready yummy yummy that's in the pan so I'm going to start spreading the layer of potatoes on look at that and then I like to top it with cheese the boys like it very full like and in it goes to heat up I think their broccoli is ready so I tried this wheat flour and yeah, it definitely didn't look like it came out, but it is actually soft with a nice crust on the outside. So yeah, we're going to give it a try. It's already after 6 p.m. so we're all hungry so I didn't wait for it to cool down. So we'll look at that steam which it is difficult to cut but it is soft on the inside definitely grainier because of the whole wheat i gotta play with that flour broccoli's ready and so is the cottage pie and there it is it's definitely grainy like i said i gotta play with it but that's dinner time. So tonight for dinner, I'm making homemade pasta with some meat sauce. I got some homemade sauce um, cooking on there. I'm trying the San Marzano tomatoes from Cento. And yeah, John and the cats, they're watching Sopranos. They're about 21 years late. He discovered them. That's episode one. So it's going to be a nice Italian dinner tonight. Put some Frank Sinatra, have some red wine. Homemade Sunday sauce pasta dinner. Look at that pasta. And the meat sauce. And the water. And my sauce. Ooh. So I wasn't able to get a shot of the food plated. But here is one of the grab and goes. It was very, very, very good. Um, I still have some sauce to jar up, but it was a hit. So that was our Sunday dinner.